All right, and I think that we are live here. Hey, everybody, it's Jake Runnestead, and I am here with uh, Todd Boss and Jeff Hunt, and we are just really excited to uh, have a little chat about this new piece called Cello Songs that we all collaborated on. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's always so exciting to, to work on these projects initially uh, and just go through that that beautiful process, like especially when working with Todd, uh, writing the text and creating the music and then handing that over to Jeff, who then studies the score and, and brings it to life with his ensemble. So uh, we want to talk about some of that process. And then at the end, we'll have the video premiere of this new piece that had its in-person live premiere <laughs> uh, back in October, early October in um, St. Charles, Illinois. Um, uh, so before we kind of dive in, I just want to encourage people, feel free to throw uh, any questions you might have in the, the comments, and uh, we'd love to get to those and, and talk about those uh, throughout our time together. Hey, Jake, how long will this whole thing take? Because some of us have chores to do. Oh, right, of course. <laughs> so uh, this will Things be over at 7.30, and then at 7.30, <laughs> that's when the uh, Cello Songs premiere will happen on YouTube. So if you're watching on Facebook Live, um, click that link, not right now, but in the comments, there's a link to the YouTube event. Click that when I tell you at the end of our, our time together and you'll be able to see the video there. Um, cool, so yeah, throw your questions in the comments and uh, I'd love to get started. Um, maybe just we can all do a brief introduction about ourselves and, and why, we're, why we're here on this uh, chat and, and maybe what we, what we do in the world. So, um, Jeff, why don't you start us off? Okay. Well, I'm going to have to think back to when this whole thing started in a way, Jake. So correct me if I'm wrong, because of COVID, you know, this, this thing that's yeah. happened has really changed our world in terms of calendars, right? But um, maybe 2018, 19, we, I sat down with you and we talked about uh, a commission. And, and here it is, 2021, and we get it, we get it going. And at, throughout that time, um, we had talked about a piece that would be around 10 minutes and really exploring something unique we didn't know at that point yet and then um the sad event of my mother's passing happened and david and doug doug bella and david um really made a generous uh, contribution uh to uh to make this all happen so that was kind of some of the the beginning uh, images of it and then you shared with me that beautiful broadside of the, uh, the of the poem and yeah, then sure. Todd was involved and Todd you you made the just you were so generous with your time right at the very beginning um I, re I re always remember that phone call I had with you and, and David oh, was on nice. the other line asking you know a little bit about who Doris was and the background of on her and so the piece really was dedicated to her memory and uh, throughout that whole process, Jake is working on it. And we'd share when another lovely memory I have are just sharing these little text messages and you know, taking pictures of what of walking in the woods and seeing trees that had fallen over and um, yeah. onto new trees. It was just we had this developed this friendship that was meant a lot to me as a collaborator with a gifted artist, um, feeling feeling really part of the process, even before. Mm -hmm we were able to perform it and it kind of I had the score in hand when all this was happening but we were sadly unable to even work on it because we just didn't have an opportunity to perform it so it was a very unusual time for commissioning a piece when it when it began and then stopped and then it began again but filled with lots of joy lots of beauty great memories yeah <laughs> well and and I can't even remember when we met um but I had heard of of you know you and St. Charles Singers um, mm -hmm. And I know that uh, my friend Craig had come and guest conducted. Craig mm -hmm. Johnson come and guest conducted, and I heard about it, you know, through him too. And um, was it as a at a conference? I think that maybe we it, finally it was. Met it was in, in Chicago. I think it was yeah. in Chicago at a conference that we right. connected and talked and about then, it. Yeah, talked about doing a new piece, yeah. and which is always like. And we were kind of talking about this. And Todd is asking me, you know, okay, so when you first learn of a you of a possible commission or project, like then what like what what do you start thinking about how do you decide what it is that you're going to do and mm -hmm. and and i know you had mentioned um having a cellist as a part of the concert mm -hmm. and so then my brain goes to oh yeah well what could i do and <clears throat> and i have this uh broadside on my wall this beautiful um 
poem by Dorian Lau. Yeah, you want to grab it? Um, and in it, she she talks about uh, when a tree falls in a forest and it falls into the arms of a living tree. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's just a gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, it's this California artist Jim Cocus, I think is how you say his name. That's really pretty. So he illustrates these contemporary poems, and then has the poet sign it. Um, so it's, yeah, it's this gorgeous poem. Um, and so I, you know, we needed a little bit more text and a little bit more expansive piece. So I asked Todd if he would uh, create, you know, this new collection of poems with that as a point of inspiration or a point of, of jumping off. So, Todd, the poet slash lyricist. Well, at first I reached out to Dorian because I thought, well, let's just see if she'll let us adapt her poem and use a lot of the lines from it and just mm -hmm. sort of invest in that poem. And she said, sure, she's a friend of mine. And um, so I got to work, and as usually happens when I go to ad adapt something, it ends up being entirely my own anyway. So it, mm -hmm. it didn't really matter that she gave us permission. Yeah. Uh, but uh, during that time, we learned of your mother's passing and that, um, that this could be something bigger than just uh, that poem, the, 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 wor the, the work that that poem does. And so I reached mm -hmm. out to you, and we had a conversation about who she was and what... Uh, how she shaped your family and the community and mm -hmm. just how what a wonderful woman <laughs> she was and then uh, sort of structurally in my head I was kind of playing around with well how is this going to be structured mm -hmm. and Jake and I talk a lot about that at the top too so he tends to like you know arcs a kind of narrative arc and that was sort of where we began but then it kind of evolved as a as a seasons of four seasons um well i think which which really came out of <clears throat> studying the cello right what makes a cello a cello and you know the four strings so their ideas of you know focusing each movement on a different string or some you know aspect of different playing techniques of the cello so i think that number four yeah, we were playing this around yeah. back and forth back and forth and then the seasons occurred to us and then yeah. Yeah, and then it seemed right to celebrate all the different kinds of voices of the cello, the different ways mm. the cellos can sound. And then it felt really right to put spring at the end, which is this ebullient kind of fun season, yeah. uh, a season of joy and, and inspiration at the end, and really, and really end on a high note and, and, and put all this fun into it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that got to be kind of fun, too. And I can tell the that aspect of um, I didn't know how that was going to work out um, having the four seasons involved, but it was absolutely perfect. It was really it added so much of an interesting dimension to the to the um, the piece. I thought not only about the, the the workings of the cello and all the attributes of the things that the cello can do, but then you brought into that world the. Um, this interesting things about all four of seasons and it just worked so well. I mean, it was from a choral standpoint and from the singer standpoint, the variety and the, the, mm. the beauty and the imagination was just uh, lots of fun to try to grasp. Mm. Really was. Well, that's great to hear. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, what's so fun about being a composer is we have a lot of back and forth in throughout the process, but then, you know, he'll send me a draft and I'll give thoughts on the draft and, you know, things get restructured or things get shifted along. But as we're doing that, I think my brain is beginning to process what's happening musically mm -hmm. and what the journey is. And so as we have that back to work, it's getting clearer and clearer. And then when it comes time to write, it's just like, boom, let's go. Let's do it. Uh, mm -hmm. Which I kind of really love yeah. that style of, yeah. of working. It just it feels more integrated or, mm. or yeah you've done a lot of processing before you ever see the final right the final text and that really sets you up to to get to get work done yeah yeah, yeah. but mm -hmm. but also what's just so thrilling about working with todd too is you know your ability to give so much um to the composer to play with mm -hmm. you know without getting in the way of the music yeah you know like i love all the different uh, imagery of of relating the cello to natural phenomenon you know, like in autumn, talking about the flames yeah. on the back, you know, the, the, the texture of the wood on the back of the cello called the flames, and then relating that to the autumnal colors. And yeah. um, so I knew that there was this fiery 
energy to play with in that movement, which is really good. And I like playing with him too, because what I like to do is uh, throw him something that he, that he doesn't like, he's not expecting, you know, we haven't talked about it. It might be new and a surprise. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. And so that last movement I uh, did as a PDF instead of a word document, because uh -huh. it's really just two lines, right? I put the two lines down at the bottom of the page. And then I sprinkled the words up above it <laughs> to look like rain, to mm -hmm. look like, to look like those two lines had settled uh, mm -hmm. in, as part of a rain uh, uh, storm. And I thought, well, I'll just give it to him that way and see what he does with it, you know? Uh -huh. It's a really unusual way of presenting text, and I knew it would inspire something really interesting. Yeah, yeah, and, and, I, and he did mention, you know, that he wanted that last movie to be playful. And so when I got these words, it's two lines, but it's, it's chewy and it's fun, and the last two lines are, each wet splat slaps what dirt keeps trapped. Like each plucked <laughs> note knocks at heart's lock shut. So it's just like mouth gymnastics. <laughs> you, um, should have, you should have heard my opening a couple first rehearsals trying to <laughs> teach, teach it. <laughs> yeah, right? It's, it's almost all... like you, you can't read it. You have to just... Memorize it. <laughs> learn it. And so immediately I thought, well, if we sang that with a traditional uh, choral... Mm tone with mm -hmm. you know overly enunciated consonants like it would just be exhausting so i knew okay this has <laughs> to be like bebop you know jazz kind of scat feel yeah each wet spot stops a dirt keeps trap like each but no not so hard stop shot but you know so it's like it just had to it had to be that that bebop fun and the bebop is so cool because then you do some uni <laughs> you, you do some unison things with it too which of course is a great bebop style right and jazz mm -hmm. unison playing and mm -hmm. you you do that with the voices it's so it's so inventive um mm. just really 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 fun i mentioned this todd at, at the um at the premiere con uh, the premiere concerts when i introduced jake i said one of the things that i I love about Jake, and I know this isn't, you don't want to hear all this stuff about you, Jake, but I'm going to give you definitely a pat on the back with this. <laughs> what I love about his music, and I'm not alone on this, is that he seems just to put the text first. And as a choral person, I really appreciate that, um, that you, you have a composer who's willing to just, you know, give, give the, the, really the impetus to the text first and then to do what you can to add to that. And that's, that's very meaningful. And to hear these that, stories... Of not you guys that, sharing it that way. It was beautiful. Not, not only that, Jeff, but he's also a really sophisticated reader. So mm -hmm. he knows mm -hmm. good work when he reads it, and he pushes me when he's not feeling it, and I have to go back and redraft. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, it, it really is It's more than just a, a joy to work with somebody who respects uh, text as much as he does. It's a challenge and an artistic uh, uh, challenge to work with someone who who knows literature as well as he does. Mm. But I think what's so fun is we we push each other, you know, we we challenge each other with every piece, you know, I'm giving him stuff, but then he's also, you know, sending me in, like he was talking, he says, new directions. He says, don't write long sentences. The choir can't do long sentences, and so I'll write him a really long sentence. <laughs> or like, Great. enough rhyming, and then he gives me more rhyming. <laughs> and I'm like, come on. Um, but it's it's usually always with good reason, and so I think we've we've developed this trust and and mutual respect for each other, where we know that what we're doing is is at the core of it is for the betterment of the art. You know, it's mm -hmm. serving the purpose of the art, mm -hmm. and that we have to you know if someone's really insistent about something, that it's with good reason, and we need to trust that artistic instinct. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's a really a part that I really value about our collaborative relationship. Mm -hmm. So, um, Jeff, I'm curious. So, okay, so, you know, we've done our process and then you get this ink on paper, <laughs> you know, what, what, what does that look like for you? Like, how do you make sense of it? How do you engage with it? Like in the first time you experience it? Well, I, I try to, what I tried to do right at the very beginning was to see what you're, kind of musical gestures are going to be and what you're how you were thinking about the text and and right away I found these fantastic um, opportunities what, what things in the music that you were doing and bringing melodic ideas from one movement into another and so I just started to read it like a book I didn't even mm -hmm. look at it at the piano I just kind of just looked mm -hmm. at it observationally and see to see what you were thinking of if I could discover in just a raw 
organic way and even in maybe even incorrectly but make some assumptions and then discover where i'm wrong <laughs> with it so i i tried to just read it like a book and then see what you were trying to come up with with this music and the more i uh i read it and then i started to play it a little bit more and then it's it just all these wonderful magical things started to come into play for me you know that first uh dee, 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 you know that first idea that beautiful melody that out of four notes that you bring into it how the piece starts off with those four and then you just elaborate it and create a whole dimension of musical sound around these fantastic words it was just mm. I, I, I found myself hoping that I would be drawn into it, and I was. So that's, that was my hope and desire. And uh, so that was my process, is just to find yeah. things that I could immediately understand. And then once I st started to understand them, I found other things that were, you know, just yeah. beautiful. Coral geek-wise, let me mention a couple of things that I just <laughs> love. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my coral geek stuff up. <laughs> okay. But what i what i love about this piece um so many things but your your coral textures are phenomenal i mean you you give us some really beautiful devices the choir i'm I'm talking from why a choir would like to sing this i think mm -hmm. um beautiful devices but then you do some really interesting pairings with the voices alto bass tenor soprano just really subtle beautiful pairings with the voices and certain aspects and then some great unison singing so you have all these opportunities for the choir to uh, engage and to be challenged and to be um, satisfied uh, you know so from a music standpoint it was those were some of the discoveries I made right away that the choir seemed to embrace and mm -hmm. and drove them to want to really dig in more you know I have a question for you Jack and kind of uh, tagging on that <clears throat> this idea of uh, these sort of beautiful unisons and um, <clears throat> sort of beautiful gestures in the voice pairings um, the piece began as a love song to the cello. You remember that? Mm -hmm. And we thought about that for a long time. Um, it still feels to me like a love song for the cello. And th in fact, mm -hmm. I think that was a title for the piece for a little while. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how, to what extent, when you were writing it, was it a love song to the cello? And to what extent was it sort of all these other things? Does mm. that make sense? Yeah. I. Um, I think it's it's a lot of just following what you're giving me in the text mm. too, with with the knowledge of everything that we had talked about in our collaborative process. You know, so like all of that is informing what's happening. So this idea of it being a love song, and I think there's a certain connotation with song, and and then we've titled it, you know, cello songs, um, and and there's an intimacy with that. There's a can be a simplicity with that, and so. Um, yeah, I think I tried to find those kinds of textures, you know, sometimes unison singing in a choir is one of the most beautiful things that one can ever experience. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and to find a great line that they can then sing, you know, in unison is really exciting for me to discover. And there's a certain kind of intimacy, right? When we add harmony, it, it expands things. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, so yeah, I think there was definitely a lot of love. Wow, I didn't realize that, Todd, when you just mentioned a love song. To the, I didn't know that that was kind of the one of the genesis behind the piece. And I can, I can tell you that our our cellist, Cameron Grimes, who did an amazing job, and yeah. Stephen Ewell, our pianist, um, experiencing Cameron's playing with it, it was like he was he was like you know in a sense experiencing this love relationship with his instrument at times, and also but with the music. So. That's very interesting. I, this is a new thing for me I'm learning tonight. Well, I remember as a yeah, part it's of the beautiful. process, Todd sent me an article about cellists who, <clears throat> when they're on their deathbed, they ask to have their instrument laid mm -hmm. in their arms and they want to, to die with this instrument that they've gotten to know and fallen in love with and, and you know, had this relationship. I with. think it was a New York Times article. Yeah. If you if you Google that, you can find it. It's a beautiful little article about maybe five or six or eight uh, different sort of famous instances of this uh, throughout history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that was part of it too. And thinking about your and then, mom. And to what extent? How, how? What was it like to work with both the text for this piece and then the knowledge that the that the cello mm. should play a a really significant role and yeah well early on when we were talking about the cello uh, 
I wanted to try to figure out well, what can the cello do? How can we highlight what the cello does? So each movement uses a different playing technique. So the first movement, summer, which you gave these kind of sweeping breeze wind gestures in the text. So I knew all those would be like long tones. So the piece opens with this sweeping breeze in the piano and choir and the cello just has these long soaring tones that occur. The second movement, um, which is autumn, which is the fiery energy of the color of the leaves. And so I use spiccato, which is a digga 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 digga, you know, really fast bowing on the cello. Um, the next movement, winter, which uses that image of the tree, the dead tree fallen in the forest, um, uses glissandi, uh, which is, I think, is kind of a weeping gesture and the idea of falling. Um, so I use that throughout the movement. And then the last movement, spring, is pizzicato, the plucking. <laughs> so it sounds like like raindrops. So, so yeah, I, I think what's really important for me is that when I'm when I'm writing choral music and including instruments, that they're not just there for sound right but they they have an important voice and they have an important role and they say something and they interact with and and express the text um so i knew the cello of course was going to have a featured <laughs> a featured role in it and that the cello would really work to express what the text mm -hmm. you know is saying or or take it further from mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. s say a little bit more musically it's almost like the choir is yeah. there to set up the cello mm -hmm. right right mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah so it and it was fun to just yeah discover the the sounds that cameron brought to it as well yeah and that <clears throat> that collaboration with cello and piano and choir each one is treated just um each instrument, each voice is treated just beautifully. There's not an overshadowing of one to the other. It's just great collaboration of, of contribution great. of music, um, which I think makes this piece very, very special too. Uh, the cello obviously plays a central role, but the, the choir at times plays a central role. And then the piano plays, you know, moments of, of taking over kind of the message and the story and the yeah. poem um, in, in such a nice way. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's the hope. Yeah, <laughs> that's always the hope. We have a question from somebody. Oh, we've got a question here from Kay. Um, your composition for cello is so intricate and beautiful. Great interaction between choir, piano, and cello. Have you composed for cello previously? Uh, I've written, um, yes, I have a piece for soprano, cello, and piano. And then I have lots of kind of orchestral music with, you know, cello parts and then string quartet and some other stuff like that. So. I've written a, a fair amount <laughs> for the cello. Um, yeah, just a reminder, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat and we'll uh, we'd be happy to, to answer those. So, so Todd, I'm curious, you know, you give me the text, I create the music, send it to Jeff. Jeff then brings the piece to life with all the musicians. Right. What does it feel like then to hear your words in that new form? Yeah, I... <laughs> I get asked that a lot and I always stumble to answer because I'm not quite sure how it feels. It, um, I think it feels different with every piece. You know, we did the um, mm -hmm. uh, A Silence Haunts Me uh, a few years back, uh, uh, sort of a, a big moment for both of us and a piece that we had really invested a lot of energy in, a much longer, uh, sort of bigger piece uh, based on a, a historical moment in Beethoven's life. And um, seeing that and hearing that for the first time was uh, <laughs> kind of borderline traumatic for me <laughs> because, because it was so big and because it was so uh, well done and uh, it, it was the culmination of just all kinds of passion that we had poured into it. So that mm -hmm. was a real, uh, a real highlight, a, a kind of a career highlight experience. Mm -hmm. There are others, uh, and I don't know, I, I wasn't able to attend the premiere of cello songs because I, I was recovering from surgery, but uh, there have been other works where I will go, and um, it just doesn't seem like my work at all. It seems like something else, you know. After mm -hmm. I write the text, and this guy doesn't have any more changes, <laughs> uh, it, feels, it feels like, for me, it feels like it's done. And I don't, I, you know, unlike, <clears throat> unlike him giving me feedback on my writing, I don't give him feedback on his writing because I don't know crap about you his. You have, you have, a, little, maybe a few times. Once in a while. 
we, we do play around with ideas, yeah. but once it's written down, it's pretty much done. And <clears throat> so I kind of have to go through the grieving process of letting go a little earlier than he does. Mm -hmm. And that makes it, uh, that makes the divorce uh, all that much simpler. You know, but what's interesting is though, it is I have to then let it go. You know, there's a letting go for me um, because I have an idea of what this piece sounds like in my head. And then I give it to a conductor and an ensemble. Then they, you know, kind of bring it to life in their own way. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in some ways, it's no longer mine. Once the piece is in the world and I hear different forms, it's like, oh, well, that's, well, that's a unique interpretation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, sometimes. Yeah. Right. Or what I love is when a conductor can teach me about something about the piece mm -hmm. that maybe I didn't even realize was in there. And that's what's so exciting for me. And mm -hmm. um, so I was just thrilled to hear it, you know, with you and St. Charles Singers and, mm -hmm. and Cameron and Stephen. We've got five minutes left and two more, two more oh, questions. Oh, yeah, I've got a question here. Um, <laughs> question for Jake after the premiere. Can this piece be doable by a high school group? Uh, I think so. I think a, a, a pretty good high school group could, could do it. What do you think, Jeff? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. There, um, yeah. yeah, I would say there's, there's so many wonderful, unique things in it, but it's all, it, it's all manageable. It's challenging. There's yeah. no question about it, but there, challenge. the challenge is, is, is there. It's built in for you to succeed. You, you aren't given anything that's just going to be insurmountable to yeah. perform. Uh, very gratifying. But yes, I firmly believe a, a good high school choir could do it. Good. Bad. Another question to Jake, do you play the cello? You know, so my undergrad degree was in music education and I had, took a string methods class where I had to learn a string instrument and mine was cello. So I played very poorly <laughs> in this. You know, it sounds like an elementary school student starting the cello. You know, that's what it was. Um, so I, I have an understanding of how all these instruments work and can play them very basically. But no, I wouldn't say that I play <laughs> the cello by any means. So when you're pu playing, when you're writing the cello part, are you playing it on the piano to hear it, or are you just um, mentally projecting? Working out some things on the piano, but also I have to approach it as the cello approaches music, right? Mm -hmm. So I have to conceive of lines that are conceived of with mm -hmm. the cello in mind. It's not like I can just write along the piano and then hope the cello can play that. You know, I have to know what the cello does well. Um, and then be able to, mm. to do that. Mm. Uh, another question here. Jake, what was it that gave you trust to do this project in the first place? Um, I guess maybe trust in, in accepting the commission or the, the collaboration with Jeff. Mm. And I think in, in our very first meeting, I sensed something really special, Jeff, in you. And um, you know that it's, the music is not about showing off. It's not about ego, but it's about making something beautiful in a collaborative uh, way. And I think I just felt that trust right mm. away mm. with you. And then, yeah. and then of course, the, the relationship that I have with Todd and our, our work together, bringing him into the loop felt really natural as a part of that, that mm -hmm. circle. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, well, there's one more question here that maybe we can all answer. And then, um, and then we'll head over to the to watch it. So, is there a particular moment in the piece that resonates with you most, Jeff? Uh, the third. I know movement. you mentioned one to me in the past. Yeah. Well, it's it's the third movement, oh, and I love all of them. I mean, there's just so much of it. Yeah. But that third movement, I think, especially just connected with the memory of my mom. Um, mm -hmm. But all of it. I mean, just the fourth movement, the bebop stuff, and the second movement, <laughs> the fire, and you know, yeah. and the first movement. Oh my gosh! It's just it's it's like it's magical how the story unfolds, and it's perfectly yeah. it's perfectly done. So I I don't know if there's a one particular one, maybe third. Sure. <laughs> I, I will say that, um, you know, this piece, because of the pandemic, it, it was, you know, we sat on it for a year. And so I, over the last, you know, year, um, I would return to the winter movement and I would just sing it and play it at the piano mm -hmm. quite often. Um, and it just, there was something that I just felt deeply connected to in that. And it is where the movement. piece kind of started. So it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it's the first movement I wrote. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is really cool. So we've got, uh, we've got a minute here at 729 just to, to reiterate. So to those of you who are watching on Facebook, um, there is a link in the comments below the, the live video where you can follow 
that to um, to check out uh, the the premiere of the cello songs video, which will happen at 7:30 uh, Central Time. If you're watching on YouTube, the page will automatically reload after this uh, live thing is done, and it'll go right into the the thing. So just kind of let your screen refresh. Um, but we are we are so excited to share this with you. I'm so grateful to you, Jeff, and to all the musicians who just did an extraordinary job. Um, it's such a beautiful performance, and I'm Thank just you. I'm so grateful. And we're grateful to the both of you for bringing yeah. this music to the world for all of us to enjoy. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, everybody, thanks for, for watching this, and we hope that you enjoy uh, cello songs. Mm -hmm.